Before we get going, Outside the Shoot would like to thank one of their sponsors, Coldstream Clear. Have you tried the new strawberry kiwi? Man, this stuff is good. Ditch the sugar with a fresh and flavorful vodka soda. Is iced tea your drink of choice? Well, Coldstream has both peach and lemon flavor. Taste the real tea difference. The only truly local hard iced tea made in the hub of Nova Scotia. Or maybe you're into mixing your own drinks. Coldstream has a huge selection of rum, vodka, liqueurs, and the must-try coffee rum cream. Visit them online at coldstreamclear.com and check out their amazing selections. Look for new products around all Atlantic provinces in the coming months, and they ship all across Canada. Again, that's coldstreamclear.com, Nova Scotia's original. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Welcome to episode 35 of Outside the Shoot. I'm your host, Randy Frame. NCAA Division I softball is back, baby, and did number two ranked Oklahoma Sooners ever come out in a big way on Thursday, defeating UTEP 29-0, setting an NCAA record with 13 long balls in the game. That's insane. Freshman Tierra Jennings started her college career off with a bang, no pun intended. Actually, there was. But uh, Jennings went four for four with three home runs and six RBIs and then followed that up with a two for three performance and another home run and a nine nothing win over Abilene Christian. Jennings would go 12 for 13 on the weekend, hitting 923. That is just crazy. Pitchers are definitely going to have to watch out for her this season. On to this week's guest, and we sat down and chatted with ISC Hall of Famer and Malfort, Saskatchewan native Keith McIntosh. Tosh has had a fantastic career spanning over 25 years as a player and 10 as a coach. He is a five-time Canadian Senior Men's National Champion, two-time All-Canadian, five-time ISC All-World Team selection, and a 2003 Pan Am Games gold medalist, just to name a few. We're going to talk to Tosh about getting a start in the game in Saskatchewan, his midget and junior national titles with the 222s program, his many ISC and senior men's experiences, donning the red and white to represent Canada on the national team, and of course the 222's fast pitch program he is a part of to this day. Tosh was a pleasure to chat with and we had a ton of laughs on this episode so I'm sure you're all going to enjoy this one. So as usual, grab that drink, sit back, relax, cause here we go. I've got the world in my palm, lights, camera, action, and tone. I can't describe what I'm feeling, ain't never felt this freedom. I've got the world in my palm, lights, camera, action, and tone. Ain't never felt this freedom. Could you, could you say that anything goes, anything goes? Hey, Dick. <laughs> Beat you to it. Got me again. <laughs> Got me again. Happy Friday. You as well, man. Yeah. It's, fr- it's Monday. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Podcast Monday. It's Friday here for us. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's our first, this is our first Friday doing this one together, I think, as an interview. I think so. I don't so. think I've done a Friday before. I can't remember. Yeah. It's yeah. unfortunate because you're taking me away from family time. Just yeah. me staring at, well, nothing in my house because nobody pays attention to me. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, yeah. Know, I know the feel, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Crazy weather we're having here right now. Yeah. Let's look. We had four seasons in two days. Yeah. We had rain and then the leaves came back on the trees and fell back <laughs> off the trees. And then it was plus 14. And then we had a snowstorm. Yeah. And then we had a rainstorm. Yeah. And now today, what was it today? 10 degrees? Yeah. It was ridiculous. And then we're supposed to have 15 on Sunday and then 22 or 25 or something on Tuesday. Yeah. It's. Yeah, well, we're <laughs> tickle your ass with a feather. Yeah. I mean, typical Halifax weather. Typical Halifax <laughs> weather. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is, like I was telling you earlier before we started recording here, yeah. about, uh, about talking to Tosh out in Saskatchewan that yeah. today it's minus 39 with the wind chill out yeah, there. That's, so that's toasty. Man. <laughs> they can fucking have that whole <laughs> yeah, Keep it out there. Yeah, it's so cold. Yeah. Good for pond hockey. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, kind of. <laughs> Yeah. Toes and hands would freeze. Yeah. Speaking of hockey. Yeah. You're uh, 
your Habs are doing all right. Well, besides last night against Ottawa. Yeah, you can't win all the games, though. <laughs> Actually, Murray played very well last night. Yeah. yeah. The Habs are doing well. I'm uh, pretty pumped about it because it's been a long time since I've been able to say that the Habs are doing well. Yeah. So. Well, being a Penguins fan, I, yeah. I'm not... I have hated the Habs my whole life, but yeah. this year I actually enjoy watching them play. Yeah. It's... I know it pains me to say that. But, yeah, well, uh, you're one of those fucking bandwagon guys, is why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I follow Sid ever since Sid got drafted there. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I like the Penguins too, but I'm a Habs fan. I have been yeah. brainwashed since I was a kid, unfortunately. And, and it's hard not to cheer for Colorado with the amount of maritime content. 100. Yeah. percent Yeah, I love it. But now they're down and out with COVID, so like, yeah, Jesus, man, what the hell? Unreal. Yeah, yeah. There's like five teams now. Yeah, so they're postponed like a whole week or something. Yeah. Of games. Yeah. yeah. Sucks for my hockey pool. It does. <laughs> Did you notice though? None of the Canadian teams have been having COVID issues. I know. It's amazing. It speaks speaks volumes right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of COVID, uh, I know today it being February. I don't even know what today is. What is it? Fifth. Yeah, t- February fifth. Um, the announcement came out today that they're allowing parents back into the rinks to watch the kids play hockey, which is good. Oh, good for the parents, parents, I guess, instead of sitting out in the parking lot. Parents will be definitely happy from with yeah. the, the social media storm that you, you see on there of them complaining. Oh, thing. yeah, I know. I don't blame them. I mean, you, of course you want to watch your kid play. You do, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, you always want to be safe. Yeah, I kind of enjoy them not being in there myself, but just because <laughs> I'm coaching. Because you're coaching, yeah. yeah. It's good, though. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, our guest this week, we got... Uh, yeah, Big Tosh. Keith uh, McIntosh from... Uh, from Saskatchewan, Hall of Famer, ISC yeah. Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. Also a uh, member of Two's Talk. Yes. Yes, he is. Another podcast. Does a very good job. Yep. Very funny. Him and Dino and uh, Donnie out there, they, it's, uh, I got to bring up this past week's uh, yeah. podcast that they did with Varm and, and Greg Leather. It was, yeah. oh man, hilarious. It, was, it was hilarious. So yeah. I got to bring that one up, but uh yeah, I yeah. was fortunate enough to play against Tosh. Um, he wouldn't remember who I was, of course, but I remember who he was. He was very good. Mm. Good left stick. And yep. uh, yeah, always put the ball in play. Freaking right. Yeah, he was a good ball player. Yes, sure. sir. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get his uh, his story on his career. And, you know, he's he got into coaching. And of course, they have the, the twos program out there yep. that, that, that they run out there. So we'll yep. get more more on that. And Dino touched on it with uh, with us before. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's always good to hear, hear what kind of the the program is yeah and he's still heavily involved which is great yeah. uh we don't it's funny i ran into a guy today uh john canning actually owns happy areas okay he's a baseball guy and he was just saying he he appreciates what we do in fast pitch because a lot of the coaches in our fast pitch circle are all former players so they're right. bringing up the kids now where yeah. the baseball group they they're not former players for the most part yeah but what he's his goal is to get those kids that they're coaching up through then you know when they get older to take over and start coaching up through as well okay yeah right but, on yeah we're lucky to stick with it though yeah exactly i love it yep anyway well uh let's uh let's get to tosh and see what he has to say okay all perfect. right yo all right here we go tosh thanks for coming on the podcast buddy Hey, fellas. My pleasure. Looking forward to it. Yes, sir. How's things out in hot and humid Saskatchewan today? <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna was just gonna check the old weather here. She is a balmy minus twenty three. Feels like minus thirty seven. <laughs> That's insane. We were yeah. t- actually we were talking before, uh, like we do a little like uh, recording prior to going on with you, and uh, yeah, uh, we were talking about the weather here. Like the last week has been just it's. Like four Hope, seasons. Hope he said, like, yeah, we, we've <laughs> yeah. had four seasons in a week. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 14 it's, degrees. It's, we'll actually, take it. You know what? We, we've been pretty lucky. Like, we've had a pretty mild winter. We had a cold snap here yeah. last weekend and then this weekend. So it just it just happens to come, like, when our when our travel teams are actually on the highway because we oh, still shit. have a little practice. Yeah. We, can't, uh, we can't do much. But, uh, yeah, we'd be cracking a lot of bats if we were outside today. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, no, it's uh, it's been we've been pretty lucky this winter. You know, outside of COVID being a pain in the ass, um, we've been pretty lucky to, to keep the program going. So that's good. We're, yeah. we're counting our blessings that way. Yeah, 100%. yeah for, for sure. How is COVID out your way right now? Um, you know what? It's not bad. We're getting we're getting you know, and and I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound wow compared to you guys. We're getting a couple hundred a day, sort of thing. But 
Um, wow. It, it's been, it's been, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been isolated a little bit. So yeah. we, you know, it's, it's been in some of the communal areas like, uh, Hutterite colonies, reserves, that kind of stuff. Okay, so, yeah. um, we're, we're seeing, a, we're seeing around Saskatoon, but t- to be honest with you boys, I know four people, three people actually that had it. Is that right? So it's, yeah, so it's just kind of whatever circle you're running in. We've been really lucky, knock on wood, that yeah. we haven't had anything through our, our program. So yeah. um, that is good. For we've sure. had some kids. Yeah, it's been good. We've had some kids have to sit out because because of a scare at school or, or what have you. Right. But, uh, no transmission through our program. So we're really lucky that way. That's good. Yeah. Hopefully it cleans up because uh, it's not looking good for nationals this summer, for senior nationals anyway, just because yeah, of uh, all the active COVID cases yeah. going on west of us, of course. But, yeah. But, yeah. Well, I I just hope that the you know we get our act together. Yeah. Government gets our act together on the vaccines and stuff, and we can get a couple circuit breakers, right? So, yeah, that's yeah. right. You that's know, right. if we can protect the vulnerable and stuff, then oh, for sure. yeah, that that's our hope. But yeah, it'd be nice. I, I feel bad for those kids, you know, going into their their last year of minor and a certain age. Now they're yeah. talking maybe age. But I also feel bad for our master's team, right? Because there's only there's only so many bullets in the clip. So like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. we keep saying, "Yeah, we're going to national so many times." So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're 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 hoping it it, uh, it comes this yeah. summer, and fingers crossed. Uh, we're itching a little bit. So it actually it was funny. I was talking to some of the boys uh, this past summer. Obviously, COVID. Forty six years. Uh, it, I had a 46 year streak. I didn't swing at one pitch last summer. Holy Zero. shit. Wow. I didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't play with my brother's team or anything. We, you know, we were kind of busy doing some small group stuff and, yeah. and I just, uh, yeah, I didn't want to go out there and embarrass myself. And so yeah, 46 years. Left. Wow, was man. I was swinging at a pitch. So That's very yeah. unfortunate though. Jeez. It's a long time. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's one of those streaks that, yeah. oh, well. That's crazy. That's over. Actually, yeah. the funny thing is, before uh, before we went on, I was saying to Hopi, I said, you know, I was like, man, I don't think I've ever played against Tosh before. Like, I was trying to go through because yeah. you stopped in 2009. But then I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. I threw against you twice at the eight, 2018 Nationals in St. Croix. I was well, with, there you go. I was with Sydney. I pitched against you guys yeah, twice. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. And that's you guys right. murdered him. Yeah. yeah. You guys kind of. Well, I, I don't know if I did. I think I was over over <laughs> weekend over St. Croix, I think. But uh, yeah, well, you know, we got, we're we pretty lucky. Like we've got, we got a bunch of guys that still wanted to play. And yeah. I mean, you know, guys have played at a, a fairly high level and, um, you know, it, it's been good. And of course you get. We got fathead there still throwing, so that helps us. And, um, you know, we picked up we picked up Trevor Ethier, the ageless wonder, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. last year. So, but it's funny, you know what? We look at that stuff and we look at yeah, you got Dino and you got Ethier, and teams are going wow. But Al Muley, nobody knows who Al Muley is. Right, he's been the top pitcher two years in a row and hasn't given up a run. He he threw against us in that semifinal game in yeah. in St. Croix. Yeah, yeah, shut us out Alexi. seven nothing. Yep, yep. yep. Holy yeah. shit. So, I mean, it's, yeah. So I, I think it's uh, stellar defense at third. It really gets <laughs> going, but uh, whatever. Pitchers, yeah. You know, they're yeah. going to, prima donnas are going to take over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. actually, before we, get, before we get on to your career, I want to, I, sure. I, I got to talk about the podcast side of things. Uh, yeah. You guys in the twos talk out there with the uh, Udino mm-hmm. and, and Donnie. How are you liking the podcast yep. side of things? You know what? It's fine. And, and you know, Dino talked about it on when he was, um, on with you guys that Sean Colburn, a buddy of ours that, you know, we've played ball with for lots of years. Yeah. He's the chicken farmer from Delisle. Yeah. Yeah. He just, he's riding around on his tractor during COVID listening to all these podcasts. And he said, you know, you guys should, you guys should do one. And I'm like, yeah, we could for sure. And then it's the direction on where you want to go. Like, do we go spit and chicklets? Right. And shut down the game, and, <laughs> um, and and parents would never let their kids play with us ever again. Yeah, or do yeah. go the other way. So we decided to go the other way. But yeah. uh, you know, I really I really enjoy yours too. Um, I'm I'm gonna take a shot at peaches. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> Dig in, brother. Hey, did he ramble on a little bit? But, but the thing is with peaches, and the thing is with peaches, like played with him for a few years. His memory is unbelievable. Oh yeah, uh, he's he's not a shy person. No by any means and uh yeah he uh he went on and on and Man, I was like, oh my god you would not god. believe you would not believe how bad i had to piss by the end of that <laughs> oh yeah I, oh i believe it i believe it 
I believe it. I, I totally believe it, which is weird too, because when he was, when Peaches is in the circle, you know, there's, there's guys out there that are human rain delays. He just gets the ball and goes. Yeah, right? and yeah. He's just in a hurry. It's like, he's got a date. I got to get out of here. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, he, uh, he, uh, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got is wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was long for the, sure. I but... love the guy. But... Oh, yeah. He was great. He was great to interview. Great guy. He was good to talk to, yeah, but it was super sure. long. You're not for the first sure. one to say that to yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, your guys, your guys' episode this past week with Vyram and Greg was, yeah, was absolutely stupid. awesome. <laughs> I love was that good or what? That oh, was man. fantastic. Oh, I know. And, and I, I just, Dino was the co-pilot for sure. Donnie, Donnie was on. He threw his in. Because every once in a while, Donnie's not on. And you can tell, you can tell, like he's, you know, he's got other things on his mind or whatever, but probably, most times he's, yeah, he's probably got, probably got 90 day fiance on his mind from yeah. TLC. Wow. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on in that melon that we're just not quite sure how that's working, but he, uh, but yeah, Varm and Greg were awesome. I, and I've, I, I, I've seen them, obviously. I've, I've never met the two guys, but mm. Dino was just, like I said, he was a kid in the candy store. He couldn't wait for that podcast because he was <laughs> yeah. just vibrating. He was, he was pretty excited about it, and it was great. They didn't disappoint. It was it was really good. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've, been, we've been pretty lucky to get some good guests. I mean, you guys have had some awesome guests, too. Like, you know, Smitty was awesome, and um, but it, it's... I just find that there's so many great stories out there. You talk to guys like Butter and, and Obi and mm-hmm. guys like that. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, I mean, they're funny guys as it is. So when you get, you know, those two and Donnie's pretty funny and, well, Dino's there. But um, <laughs> other, <laughs> but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. We're having a blast with it. For That's sure. good. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was going to bring up, you guys, you, the, a couple episodes ago, I think you were talking about the Dino's Christmas tree. The, <laughs> The, oh my the twenty nine dollar tree. <laughs> twenty nine dollar tree or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Charlie Brown Christmas man. He he. Okay, so here's the guy. Okay, so I know I got a pitcher on the line here, but it, I mean, he makes pitcher money, <laughs> yeah. and he spends it. He spends it like he makes like uh, grocery stick fourteenth guy on the bench money. <laughs> you know, like come on, man, like get off your wallet. It's unbelievable how frugal he is. It's crazy. That's awesome. crazy, man. I, yeah. I laughed my ass off when I, when I heard that. I was like, Oh, yeah. that's, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. on to the, uh, on to the career. Uh, sure. Tell us about, uh, getting your start in the game out in Melfort. Um, yeah, I, it was, it was kind of, I, I lived in, um, born and raised, I guess in Melfort, but my dad used to work for the wheat pool. And, um, when, uh, when I was really young, we moved around a little bit. And I think my, you know, grade, grade two to grade eight, kind of those, those minor ball years, I was actually living in a town about, uh, 15 K out of Malfort called star city. And we played softball in school all the time. Um, but after school it was baseball and, um, uh, kind of, kind of got going with that. Like I, here's the thing though. I don't remember playing any games. We practiced a lot, mm-hmm. you know, we just, there's like 500 people in the town kind of thing. But, um, I guess I, my, my start in Malford with, uh, with Dino and that program or the twos with his dad and stuff, um, probably happened when I, when I faced off against Dino, um, I was Dino's backup forever. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't get to throw a whole lot, fellas. Um, <laughs> there was one, there was one time where I did win us a provincial championship and it still bugs Dino to this day. And we'll get into that <laughs> later. But, um, I, I think, you know, just, just playing, I remember playing at a, a school tournament, you know, um, us against Malford sort of thing, school district thing. And his dad was there and, and my dad and his dad were, were friends or whatever. But, but Dean's dad was really good friends with my uncles. My uncles played on those, um, men's teams in Malford, you know, back in the seventies. And so, so really good friends there. And, and yeah, I think it was just a phone call to say, Hey, we, you know, we've got this minor softball team in town. Um, you know, why don't you come? I think it would have been Pee Wee. So at U 12, I guess, yeah. uh, was my first year. And, and then that was it, you know, and I've said it, you know, many times that, you know, Dean's dad was, was an amazing coach to have. And, um, my, you know, my grad picture and my, my team pictures looked a lot alike. Yeah. We came from a town, of, yeah, a town of 5,000. That's awesome. Um, as we started winning, I guess we, we picked a few guys up, like some names like Dewey Dyke and, uh, we had, you know, pitchers like that and Jimmy Kleiman, had joined us and, mm-hmm. Um, you know, it just kind of, kind of went from there when we needed some pieces, um, it went, but yeah, we were pretty successful, but that's all we did. That's all we did was play ball. Like mm. it was hockey in the winter and ball in the summer. And, um, 
But I guess, you know, I'll, I'll give him some kudos because I imagine I'm going to shit on him most of the time. But um, <laughs> when you get to stand behind that big right arm, you win a lot. Oh, yeah. God, oh yeah. for sure. Uh, you know, he uh, he definitely was was the equalizer. And, you know, and I, I'll tell you, one of, one of the things that Dean's dad did um, where he a lot of people shook their heads at the beginning was uh, when we were uh, first year Bantam. So first year, you 16, 14, I guess, um, whatever the age groups are now. Uh, we played in the men's league and, um, we got our butts handed to us and Dean's dad, uh, we talk about him a bit. He was a senior, a thrower, um, back in the day. And so he would kind of throw for us once in a while, after, you know, if we were getting beat up a little bit too much, but I don't think we lost the game to kids our age. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was, we used to playing against men. The game was faster. Yeah. We were definitely over our heads the first couple of years, but um, I, I think it was, it was a thing that, that really helped us. And, and I see it a little bit now in Saskatoon, but you know, I, I think we're still in very much a, a society where we're wrapping kids in bubble wrap and oh my everybody, God, yeah. Gets ribbon. Yeah, everybody gets a ribbon and um, yeah. you know, yeah, we don't want, we don't want our kids to go out there and, you know, and get beat up by older people. Well, that came out wrong, but, um, <laughs> but, but, I, but I mean, no, I, I, I think playing person. in the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, playing in the men's playing in the men's league and getting that competition really, you know, we didn't play at kids our age until provincials. Hmm. Well, it yeah. definitely helps, so, though. I mean, oh yeah, it, it, we did the yeah. same thing around here. Like, yeah. like, well, we had no choice because we had no kids our age to play. Yeah, against, that's true. To be yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, it in the long run, it definitely helped for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And and then Dino's dad being a senior a thrower. Yeah, and, uh, that man. You know, he was probably when we were younger. He was he was thrown from regular distance. I I guarantee he was throwing from 38, 40 feet our last year of junior. No screen, <laughs> taking it off the chest uh, on the knees, like yeah. you know. And I, so so we're you know we're in we're in Peewee and we're taking BP off a legit rise ball, yeah. right? So uh, yeah, all that stuff just just helps. And and that's you know with our program, that's kind of what we're trying to do with with our girls too. Is just mm-hmm. right. kind of expose them to the higher level. Yeah. Uh, as quickly as possible to see, you know, where they stand. And so, yeah. So, so my minor days were, were awesome. We, you know, we obviously had some success with, with, uh, the Westerns and a couple of national championships mm-hmm. and got to travel a little bit. And yeah. And that was, that was where I got my start. It was a great place to grow up, great place to play ball. And yeah, it was awesome. Great. How many, how many years did, did Dougie coach out there? He coached every year. Well, he coached every year except one. He took a year off in, uh, 1987. So we won, we won the midgets in 86. He mm-hmm. took off 1987 or 88, one of them, uh, to coach Dean's sister, Jen, okay. Okay. pitcher. And Malford was hosting, it was 88 because Malford was hosting the Saskatchewan summer Games. So he coached that team. Uh, so he just got, <laughs> he just got his brother, uh, Lester and, uh, Dean's cousin, Kevin, another couple of whole lines that, um, coached us that one year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But he, he coached us every other year. He was the he was the first three M softball Canada coach of the year. Wow. When That's that crazy. Came That's out. cool. Yeah. So man, yeah. he, he yeah, might awesome. he obviously had quite the influence like on everybody yeah. in their development growing yeah. up out there. Well, yeah, and I mean, you know, so you got you got Dean and myself that you know had some pretty good careers, but For then sure. you got you know Jimmy Kleimanig is with us, my brother. Um, there was there was a lot of guys that went on to play you know decent ball out of that town, and and I think you know had had it been a situation where you know guys could stick around and you know if you weren't farming or in that industry um you know there was really not much for us at that time so right. you know if guys if guys could have stuck around we we probably would have had a senior team um but yeah it just it was time after 89 we all yeah. kind of graduated at junior it was time to go so. right yeah. now you mentioned the national titles uh you'd win the midget and the junior national titles what uh yep. what do you what do you recall about those national titles anything uh anything well, big yeah well yeah, it was neat. It was because it was we we're in Miramichi, and uh, it was on the same diamond. We won both titles on the same diamond. Wow! And, uh, wow! Yeah, we yeah in in '86. It was funny in '86. Um, uh, I don't know who was in charge of booking the flights. I don't know if it was parents. I don't know if it was softball Sask. I have no idea. But what whatever happened, um, we were scheduled to leave the week before the tournament started and coming home the day it started. <laughs> um, so it was going to cost a mint, I guess, oh, to change all these shit. flights. So we busted it. 
Ooh. We went from from Melfort to Miramichi is fifty six hours one way. Oh um, shit! Yeah, so we uh, we went out on the bus. We stopped. Um, we stopped a couple times on the way down to practice. Didn't play any exhibition games. But we stopped. Stopped in Thunder Bay. Stopped in Quebec. Um, just, you know, a couple stops to practice yeah. and rolled in. And um, it, it was kind of a neat situation because um, I think because we went on the bus. Everybody's parents, um, little brothers, you yeah. know, I, my, my little brother was sleeping on the floor the whole time. <laughs> um, you know, so it was, it was an opportunity that family could go. Um, my grandparents went. Um, so that was pretty cool. But, you know, after we won, the bus trip home was obviously a lot quicker. It seemed a lot quicker. Yeah. And uh, this is before cell phones. We're about, I don't know, maybe 10 miles out of Malford. Uh, down the last stretch and everybody's, you know, we're starting to get fired up and there was a cop car and CJBR is a local radio station. Uh, they had the road kind of blocked off. They were stopping the bus and uh, Neil Suchek, I remember Neil Suchek was our sports guy, got on the bus and the, the bus erupted, right? Cause it's the first <laughs> local person we've seen right? yeah. and we're pumped and you know, now we're, you know, and uh they had a parade for us and it was awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> Con- convertibles, and flat decks. And, you know, I remember my other set of grandparents, my grandma waving a, a hanky to get our attention. And like, it was just, it was amazing. <laughs> like and something out of this, a movie. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. It was, yeah. you know, I had this ceremony and I, there's a picture of myself and uh, Johnny Kevarego holding the, the national team plaque. And we're sitting on the, you know, on the sitting up on the back seat of a, uh, of Jerry Bulmer's, uh, convertible, you know, like <laughs> rock stars, man. Yeah, yeah. Rock stars. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I remember that, and and uh, that that was really cool. Eighty nine was really cool because we stayed at the same hotel, the same yeah. people owned it. Um, so, so there was you know a little bit of familiarity there, and um, we won it in a like it was the fog. I, I I don't know how Jeff Gowdy caught the last out because I don't know how he saw it. <laughs> um, but again, it was one of those terms we just kind of we got on a roll and there were some things that happened that, yeah. and you guys know how it is when you yeah. win, certain things have to go your way That's and right. mm-hmm. we'll get in, go, we'll get into to too many of those, but, um, it was, it was really cool. And, um, but it was the first time we saw guys like Andy Jackson and, you know, some of those guys that, yeah. you know, were going to be prominent players as, as we went along. And, um, but yeah, so it was, it was really neat. It was, it was, um, a bunch of hometown guys. There was four of us that played on every team, um, which is pretty cool. And yeah, so yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was fun, such a, fun, such a fun. great time to grow up. That's yeah. wicked. That's awesome. So yeah. the following year you jumped a senior with the camera was merchants, yeah. was it? Yeah. Yeah. I went to, uh, originally I was going to play in Saskatoon with, uh, Rempel brothers. And, oh, okay. um, I was, I was set to move into Saskatoon and, and play. I'd gone to New Zealand that fall and uh and played part of the season and how was that um it was okay yeah it was okay i played with tiero ha i was the only white guy on the team <laughs> and uh which was different yeah um but uh i remember johnny lomax was our pitcher and he had played world junior before but at the time johnny lomax was uh really starting to make his name in rugby and uh i just remember him being this huge guy mm. um but it, it was good it was fun i had, I had a good time you know see mark Sorensen, and guys like that for yep. the first time and play against them and um made some made some lifelong friends for sure but yeah, yeah i came home um and rempel brothers had a spot in the infield i would have been the third third guy you know between shortstop and second they had some veteran guys which is awesome and then dale dirks decided to come home and dale was playing in in Camrose, but living in Saskatoon and he decided he was going to stay. So I was out. Oh, and, shit. uh, in a, yeah, in a matter of 24 hours, uh, Dougie Arnett, uh, who was from around home, uh, gave me a call and said, Hey, you want to come to Camrose? And I'm like, where's that? <laughs> but yeah, sure. I'm in. Yeah. So I went out there and it, it was probably the best move for me. Um, I know that, you know, Rempel was a great organization yeah. to play near home would have been awesome. But I got to go to Camrose and uh, I I played right away, and I think that was that was probably the best part. Yeah, on, yeah. On playing alongside of you know you're standing yeah. behind Glenn Jeveny and you're standing beside Brian Sosnowski and Barry House and Clark Bosch and and all these you know national team and former national team guys. Yeah. It was yeah. it was amazing. It was it was definitely. Uh, 
trial by fire for sure. Yeah. Um, because you know, you're, you're playing every game and, and some games are better than others. But, um, I always said that my, that move was probably the best thing that could have happened to me and that, you know, Dean's dad, Doug taught me how to play the game. And Brian Sosnowski taught me how to cheat. <laughs> he's, he, he's the guy that taught me, you know, how to, how to read hitters and, yeah. you know, how to kind of the game within the game, you know, that sort of yeah. stuff. Doug Arnett taught me how to load bats. <laughs> so it was, it, it was all that, it was that, that education. And, and of course, you know, and I've heard most guys that we talk to in our game, that's when I first got to go to the ISC, that's when yeah. you know, senior nationals. I mean, you, you thought you were pretty good coming out of junior, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. national camp, you know, and then you go, yeah, I'm not that Well, good. that's what I was, I was going to um, ask you how, how you found the adjustment yeah. compared to junior. Yeah, it was, it was huge in that. Um, I, I just remember, one of the things was trying to find my stroke and mm. uh I, I i think i i changed my stance and my my approach a hundred times the first year just to try and find something comfortable mm-hmm. um you know uh, it just you tried to emulate saws or you tried to emulate uh barry house or doug Arnett and and you quickly learn that you can't do that you no. know you got to learn to to be your own hitter and and um so, so it was good because you're seeing world class right off the hop, and um, yeah, it was it was a huge, huge adjustment. Just the speed of the game, you know, yeah. you're you're playing a game that you think you play pretty well, yeah, until right mm-hmm. until yep. that that first time. So, but it was great. I mean, the, the five years in Camrose were were amazing. Uh, I ended up going to school in Camrose. Um, I uh, it. it I ran into, went into the sports store one day and the, the guy at Sid that owned Sid Sports introduced me to Bill Luke and Bill Luke was the uh, coach of the college hockey team in Camrose. It was Augustana and now it's under the U of A. And uh, he said, hey, Sid says you play a little hockey. And I said, yeah, play a little hockey. And two weeks later I was in school and <laughs> Shit. did my degree in Camrose. Yeah, it was, it was unreal. Jeez, that's good. Wow. Um, Camrose was such a, such a great place. If I wasn't here, I'd be there. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I got two trips to Europe playing hockey and, you know, it was, it was really neat because, uh, I was older. I was, I was 21, so I didn't have to live on campus. So I kind of had the best of both worlds. I could go on campus anytime I wanted, but I lived in, you know, a townhouse and with a roommate. And so during the winter, I was around the hockey guys and not really talking to the locals. And then, then come summertime, it was, it was ball and you were right back in it with all the locals. Yeah, it was, so it was really cool. It was, it was, uh, it was a great town and a great time to, to grow up through the game for sure. Who's the better hockey player? You or Dino? Um, well, you can ask Dino, I I think, and he's made, (laughs) he's made joke of us before. He says that we should be living on my NHL pension right now. Um, but he, uh, he definitely, it's amazing watching him play hockey even now like our family team plays in a, a tournament back home every november and, and he still straps them on for you know one time a year yeah um he's got amazing hands for a big man um he needs you know how they say he could beat guys in a you know that guy's got such great hands he could beat five guys in a phone, phone booth, booth yeah <laughs> Yeah, Dino needs way more room to turn around. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he's got he's got slick hands. Um, his skating, I, I'm I'm way better skater. Um, but uh, but he uh, no, he was pretty good. And he got drafted. It was awesome. Yep. Um, yeah. I just found that my yeah, I was in the wrong era. Yeah, I've been in the air where there was no contact. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> that would have been. That would have been my Josh, era. I hear no, you. I, I hear you there, man. I'm in, I'm in the same boat yeah. with you there. Yeah. 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 Well, we, you know, it was funny. We talked about, you know, I'm just kind of going off the tracks here. Donnie's not here to pull me back on the track. So, <laughs> Sorry. Um, but we talk about our, our mid triple A team. Like we had, uh, Curtis Lecician, Jeff Rogers, Kevin Chevel Dayoff, Kevin Kaminsky, Holy Cam Jesus. Brown, Dean Holine. Um, yeah, it just goes on and on and on. Um, it was, it was an awesome team and Jeez, um, guess. yeah. Yeah. So it was, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I, I always loved hockey and, um, but I, uh, ball was my thing. Mm. And when I, when I was done playing college, I played, um, I think I played like three games a senior and I just, I just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I, I kind of finished out the year and, but I, I really got into officiating. So, um, to me, that was, that was the best. I, I worked the SAS junior league for 20 years and oh, shit. got to travel all over Canada and, yeah. I'm um, fortunate enough. I did every amateur championship except the Memorial Cup. 
Wow. And wow. I, yeah. So, so it was awesome. And that, that part of the game, I really loved it. And, and a lot of guys around, not a lot of guys, a couple guys, hmm. uh, tried to talk me into playing senior when I moved back to Saskatchewan, but I was, I was making way too much money refereeing. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and the thing too, was after you referee a little bit in the senior leagues, I'd have a target on my back, man. Yeah. Oh God. Me. Yeah. I was just oh, going to say oh, that. Yeah. 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 Remember me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah, so that, yeah, it was, yeah. So, so Dino would say that he probably went farther in the game, but there's no question I was better off. Right on. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll be, yeah. Don, I'll be Donnie and reel back in here. Let's, uh, <laughs> there you so, go. There you go. Uh, yeah. I don't like uh, 90 day fiance though, but uh, anyway, uh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to 91 ISCs. Uh, that would be your yeah. uh, first, your first all world team. Man, mm-hmm. what do you recall about that? Because I mean, you you were facing guys like Michael White, Chubb, Brad Underwood. That must have been, yeah. you know, pretty cool. Yeah, it was. It was cool. And, and going to kind of, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, Kimberly and Eau Claire and some of the meccas of, of the ISC and fast pitch. That was in Sioux City. And that was cool. Mm. Um, you know, Pencor was at the top of the game. Um, you know, you're playing among the cornfields. And uh, it, it was really cool. Uh, I think... The, I, I probably felt way more comfortable. The year before that, ISEs were in Victoria. Um, and we went there and, and we finished seventh with Camrose. And that was back in the day when seventh was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, and that kind of indoctrination at that point too, like, uh, you know, Meredith, all those guys, we, we saw everybody. And um, so going into 91, I felt I felt a lot more comfortable. I had one ISC. I did you know one nationals under my belt, and and we had a really um, we had a young team, so we were all just full of piss and vinegar. And um, yeah, it was it was a real cool experience. Um, had a had a good week. Um, didn't think I had that good a week, mm. but I did. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just one of those things that it was funny because you know that was you know, we bust down there. So, uh, I came home and found out I was all world, you know, this is before cell phones and stuff. I was all world when a guy from the Sioux city paper called me a week later. Oh shit. So oh wow. Didn't. Yeah. So I didn't know. And, and, uh, Rick Rzeski, Rempel must've played late. He stuck around, brought my plaque to nationals the next week. And oh, nice. yeah, so yeah, so it was, it was, it was cool. It was, um, again, it was one of those things where, you know, I, and that's the thing, boys. I, I never, I don't think I ever considered myself, you know, quote unquote. You can't see me doing air quotes, quote unquote, <laughs> guy or anything like that. I just, I just thought I, I was, I, I just thought I was a really good role guy. Yeah. And um, I just, I just, I chipped in. You know, one of my lines was, you know, Dino, you can't hit two run shots without me. Right? <laughs> like right. My job, is, my job is to get on base and yeah. put the ball in play, and you know, play some defense, and, and that's. So, so when you, with, you know, that was kind of my attitude and, you know, some weeks were good weeks and mm-hmm. some weeks weren't, but, yeah, yeah. um, yeah. So, so that was, that was, that was 91. It was, it was pretty cool because at that point you think, geez, maybe I'm not as bad as I think I am. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I, you know, maybe, maybe I'm starting to get a little bit at this level. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it was, it was pretty rewarding and it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. That's right good. on. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to jump to 96, uh, Mm-hmm. being named to the Canadian national team. What did it mean to be able to put that red and white uniform on for the first time? Uh, I remember standing in front of the mirror for, it felt like a day and a half. <laughs> yeah. It was about 15 minutes and I just stared at it. Oh, you yeah. know, and I still have it. It's one of the jerseys I got to keep, um, you know, with the old softball Canada logo. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was really cool. Um, anytime, Anytime you get to put that jersey on, and again, I I looked at it as you know, you know, pinch me, right? I'm, mm-hmm. you know, you look at some of the guys, Adam Smith, Chris Jones, Terry Weave, all those guys that were there, especially that '92 team, right? Mm-hmm. Like I just come, kind of come into the game, and all those guys were still, you know, at their prime, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I never really put myself in that category. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never felt like I was in that in that you know conversation. Um, but when when you get the call to do something like that, it's just like man, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing how that, how that goes. But yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, it was funny because, um, the, that Perth shootout where the development team played the New Zealand national team, I was, I was just playing around on the internet. And I found it 
and I couldn't even remember if I played in the game. I didn't know <laughs> if I was even on that team, and I, there I was playing third base. Oh shit! Uh, wow, a, wa- <laughs> wa- a whopping zero for three. But yeah, it was, and they called me Kevin. Kevin. Oh yeah. Oh really? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I hadn't quite made it at that point. I don't think. But yeah, no. I was, you know, it was. It's when you get that first taste, you just yeah. you just want more, right? And and that that became my goal. I, you know, it, it was kind of. It was kind of in the back of your mind that wow, that'd be really cool. But then once you get to put it on, then you just never want to take it off. Oh, that's yeah, right. for sure. Um, yeah, so that that became you know kind of a driving force for sure. So what's uh, what's your biggest memories on your time with National? Obviously, Pan Am Gold. Yeah, Pan Am Gold was awesome. Um, you know, and and I it was funny. I was talking to Craig Crawford the other day just about this, and um, you know, Smitty talked about it too. You know, we went with a team where. Um, most of our team had never worn the jersey before right. um, because it was at the same time as the ISC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so there was guys that weren't available, and and you know instead of uh, Dean Holine, uh, Darren Zach, Todd Martin, um, we didn't have those guys. Right. You know, and and not that our pitchers, we just weren't household names like Nicky Underhill, Trevor Ethier, Witten, Craw, Smitty, uh, Ricky Smith. Um, you know, it was it was a I don't know if we went down there with a lot of expectations. We had expectations. Mm, and, of course. And we had, and a little bit of pressure because I don't know if you guys know or not, Canada's never lost gold. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so there was, there was expectations. And, and I remember talking to Craw about this and, um, you know, we, we didn't want to be the guys. We didn't want to be the guys that didn't win. Right. Yeah. So, um, Again, a lot of things went our way. We played well. I mean, we gelled as a team. We played really well. A bunch of young guys. Um, you know, I, I was playing short. Bobby Court was playing second. So there was a lot of familiarity there because we played together in Victoria. Um, Gary Hermson, guys like that. So there was a lot of familiarity. Um, but we just we just really gelled. And um, there was a coming out party. Witty had a coming out party. Nikki had a coming out party. Um, so it was it was really good that way. And then uh, I'll never forget it. Uh, just standing there, loaded bases, tie game, Michael White and Ronnie White hit an absolute rocket through Dwyer's legs at first base. It one hop through his legs and went to the fence. That's how I already hit it. Holy cow. And he yeah, cleared the bases. Um, and, uh, I was on deck cause Potskin got thrown out of home plate. So to go up, I think it was another, well, it would have been another run, but that was the last out at home. And, and then I just I stood back and watched Nikki Underhill throw, you know, nine pitches Babies. that I thought went a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's a picture of, of one of the rise balls that went past Kerry Shaw that ripped Cross' glove off. Oh. Like his glove is up his fingers. So that's how hard he was throwing. And man, and I just remember looking at over at Bobby Cork going, "We got nothing to do here. Like, <laughs> yeah. The yeah. ball is not going to get put in play, and if it is, it's going to take our head off anyway." So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. And then. You know the the ceremony, and, and you know guys talked about it maybe, but we we watched the the girls uh, play, the women play yeah. the US final, and, and got silver, so we got to see that. It was the first time I think maybe uh, I'm I'm kind of thinking it was because we never heard of it before, but. When we got there, the the fields they were um, they were still under construction. They're still painting it when we had our first on field practice when we got to the Dominican. And, and I remember the the just packing up and leaving after practice. And and Cron and I kind of had this planned. We did bury a toonie right in front of home plate. Oh shit! Sure. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we buried it there. And uh, it was funny. So we win and everything's awesome. And um, uh, after that game. Um, we're watching and crying are standing in the outfield on the second dime and watching the girls. And I went, Holy shit, man, we forgot about our duty. <laughs> so we ran over to the field and all the boys came with us. And there's lots of pictures, no video, obviously, cause, yeah. but lots of pictures of us digging down and we dug down about a foot and a half and pulled this thing out. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was cool. Um, so yeah, so I remember that. I remember the, at the anthem, you know, shutting off halfway through, they didn't have the full Canadian anthem. So you got, you know, you got our grown men standing on the podium, bawling their eyes out, singing the last half of the national anthem. I remember the, the PA announcer starting to talk and he just, he just, he stopped talking because we were singing so loud. Um, so, you know, that was pretty cool too. Um, but yeah, just lots of things went our way. Um, there was the, the rain delay before the final, um, kind of a funny story. And, you know, I got a lot of buddies on that American team, but, 
uh, they were leaving. They, their, their flights were leaving. A lot of their guys were leaving to go back to the ISC. And then and if we got rained out, you know, we were declared champs. We didn't want it that way, no. but we were going to take it. And, uh, and Harvey Stevenson came on. The, we're sitting on the bus waiting and kind of eating ice cream and hanging out. And Harvey Stevenson said, said boys, you got to come see this. And the rain had stopped and we walked out. And the U.S. was on the field trying to get it ready. They were oh, shit. Drag. They, yeah, they were using rakes to try and get the field ready. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was really nice of them. Because yeah. Because it was an awesome game to play. So yeah. glad we played it. But yeah, yeah. So, so those kinds of things were, were pretty cool. And then, of course, just Saskatoon, right? Just yeah. playing in Saskatoon, my last go around. And um, yeah, that that was really cool, playing in front of family and friends. But oh, lots of, I mean, there's, yeah, lots of great memories with, with national team, lots of great stories. Um you know, playing with buddies that, you know, you're never going to forget for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I wanted to ask about, uh, what was it like playing for the farm? You know, they had such a storied franchise down there. It it must've been pretty, pretty awesome playing for them. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. And, uh, so the year before 2004, um, I played with Calgary and we, I think we got third that year. Um, but we won nationals that year. Uh, Dino went off cause we've talked about, you know, the home runs he gave up and, mm-hmm. uh, the one that Jody, I hit over the shitters <laughs> and, uh, and, and I, and my brother tells a story. He told on our cast, he said, do you remember what you said to me when Jody Yates ball went over the shitters? And I said, no, what did I say? You said, you looked at me and said, we're going to win nationals <laughs> yeah. because I just, I just knew that Dino was going to be ready to go. And oh, of course shit. the, you guys know the story. He threw a no hitter and knocked yep. in the winning run in the final. And, um, so that, that was neat because then after that was all over, we're standing in the beer tent and he says, Hey man, like, uh, Rod wants to talk to you. Like, do you want to come play for the farm next year? And I was like, kidding me? Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I remember just being on a, like working and got the phone call and, and Rod called me up and said, so I hear you want to be a farmer. And I'm like, Rod, I would love it. So yeah, the deal was done and it was, it was awesome. It was two years and, you know, yeah. I, I know Colin and, and Marty and, and Dino have all talked about it. Yeah. Like it, it was definitely, they didn't bring guys in if you weren't farm material. Is that right? And, mm. um, yeah. And it was, you know, I, and, and you guys have brought it up too. And we've talked about it. There's no real dickheads in our no. in our sport I mean, no. you know but there definitely were no dickheads on that farm team yeah, like it was nice. you know that and i've said it before the, the the laughs that were going on in the dugout probably came off as being you know we were a bunch of pricks yeah but the reality was the game was way more fun in the dugout than it was on the field <laughs> like we were having yeah. a, we were laughing at each other oh yeah 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 and it was just that group um it was just and it was nice you know, to be a part of a group that, you know, the, the satin jackets and Charlie, the pig. And I mean, it was just, you know, it was just, you're, you're part of folklore. And I, and, and I, as you know, great a career as I had, um, if I hadn't had that opportunity to play for a franchise like that, I, there would have been a hole. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Right on. Yeah. For sure. yeah. I want to ask about playing uh, for Aspen interiors last two seasons there. Yeah. First off, how great was it to be playing back? back in you know your home province for the last two seasons it was good uh, it, it was it was great and you know it we we had talked about that over the years um uh like i moved to camerals hmm. and then i moved to victoria right so uh, i i i wasn't flying around a lot until um probably i guess it would have been 90 90 98 maybe um i got a job back home I uh, finished school, got a job. So, you know, Victoria kind of flew me in and out. And that was the first time I really started flying. And then after that, I was flying every, yeah. oh, always mm-hmm. until, you know, the last two years, flying with, you know, to meet your team. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And I, and, yeah, and I remember showing up at Saskatoon Airport and there'd be like seven of us, eight of us from Saskatoon going somewhere. Wow. You know, like, you know, Timmy Hildebrandt and Robbie Scheller and yep. myself and uh, all these guys it were just you know and we're looking at each other going man we'd have a pretty good team yeah but there was this the, the sponsorship at the time wasn't there rempel was was kind of done and they were the last big sponsor and um so yeah so when when the curlicks decided uh <laughs> it, it was funny like that old four season uh, I was driving, this was cell phones now and I was driving, I guess you could talk on your cell phone then because I answered it. And, um, 
it was Chris Wright calling me saying, Hey man, uh, what are you and your brother and Dino doing for nationals? And I said, I don't know. And he goes, well, what would it take? So I said what it would take. And he said, I'll be right back. He calls me back in five minutes and he says, done. And I said, who are we playing for? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, it's the Aspen, you know, they were Black Sox at the time. Yeah. It was that junior team of Nudie and all those guys that had kind of won nationals. Oh, right. Yeah. And the Curlick, Curlick family, we're going to put some money behind it and, and away we go. So uh, now I'm handcuffed. So first called Dino. I said, Hey, by the way, we got a team for nationals. And he goes, okay. And I said, this is, this is the deal. He says, okay. And I said, we're playing for Aspen. He goes, who? <laughs> he didn't, nobody knew like these guys, you know, they were just kind of coming through. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. And we had the, the miracle showing in, in St. Croix where, you know, everything went our way. Mm-hmm. Like Steve Langley beats the host. So we don't have to play the host right away. And, yeah. You know, like it was just, it was weird how that whole thing went. We won't get back into that, but, um, that's where it kind of started and, and Curlix, um, got a taste for it and, uh, you know, great sponsors, great people. Uh, Jay ended up learning a lot from, you know, from different, um, different coaches that had kind of helped us out along the way. Larry Lynch helped us, Chris Wright helped us at the time. Mm -hmm. And, and he learned a lot and ended up taking over the coaching range. And then 2000, probably six, I guess is when, um, you know, after things kind of, you know, 2006, we were in Prince George and it, it didn't go great. I, I had a bad experience. Anyways, Malali, that was the Malali where my son got sick and, um, oh, and sure. I couldn't go to the qualifier right in Mexico. Oh yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Malali mm-hmm. got to go to that one. And, and I mean, yeah, it, it, he didn't need that. I mean, he would, he would have been there anyways, but, mm-hmm. um, but that was the kind of year that I think they decided, you know, enough is enough. We're, we're going to go after it. So that culminated in that, you know, 2007, put it together. 2008, they really put a good team together. And um, it, it was just, uh, it, I, I liken it to playing for the farm. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like, it was a bunch of guys that, you know, we, you've, a lot of guys that call us the misfits. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of were, I guess, but we had some pretty good players. Yeah, I guess. And, uh, yeah. you, you know, we, we had a pretty good lineup, but everything just kind of clicked. Um, and guys went off. Dale Levy went off that year. And, and Obi had a great year behind mm-hmm. the dish. And Dino and EC, Ricky Smith, mm-hmm. um, you know, Scrappy. Uh, Greg Crawford was all world that year. My brother had a good year. It was just, it was just Daryl Joy. It was just went on and on. And it was a different guy kind of every weekend and the only final we lost that year was the isc yeah we won i was gonna ask we were in. yeah i was gonna ask about yeah. I, I read that you guys won every single tournament except for that yeah. isc final like that's yeah that's unreal and it that's the one title you don't have right yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Oh, Appreciate sorry. that. Yeah, but I mean, Dino uh, told us to say yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, a, just a kick in the chest, right there. Yeah. Right uh, Welcome to the podcast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did Dino tell you to say that? Friggin Did Dino no. tell you to say that? <laughs> no. Damn yeah. that! Damn that! Yeah, team's yeah. talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like uh, yeah, I've lost in the final three times, man. And uh, two, two, two were heartbreakers, and one was just uh, get me out of here. Yeah. Um, yeah, we ran out of gas in '97. The farm put the boots to us. Uh, in Victoria and we were the host team and, um, but, uh, yeah, the, the loss in Eau Claire, um, in 95 with the farm, we were up, up to going in the last inning and, uh, yeah. And Corey gave up some, some shots and, and, you know, God, it wasn't Corey's fault or anybody's fault. Yeah. That's a good team. That was County. Yep. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, and then, yeah, against, uh, River Sharks in, uh, in Kimberly. And again, we're up, um, but I think what lost us that wasn't wasn't the fact that um, I mean Dino, he was he was throwing absolute pellets, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I, I I he didn't he wasn't throwing any harder or any he wasn't throwing any less hard. I think he just he got a little tired, flattened out a little bit, and um, but what what people don't talk about is the fact that we had the River Sharks in the undefeated game yeah. in a mercy situation and we couldn't push to the last run across. And then we played a marathon and they beat us. Oh, like, no way. Like night, like 1918 or whatever the hell. <laughs> right. And which meant we had to play the farm again. So we oh, had to play Jesus. one more game against the farm, yeah. and, you know, uh, that went our way. Yeah. Um, but 
yeah, I think if we don't play that extra game, yeah, um, I think rest. we're we're in obviously, yeah, we're in better shape. But mm. but yeah, I mean that. But that's you know, yeah, yeah, you lose you lose in the final three times. But you know what? I was in the final three times. Exactly. Not a lot I've of people can say that. No. Yeah. Oh nah, my God, a lot no. of guys can't say that, and you know, it, and it, fortunately for us, the, the year ended. You know, in 2008, on a great note, winning nationals at home. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that was uh, that was a great experience um, because you know it was kind of th- those years where you know we played. Um, you know, the Three Nations Cup was at home, and nationals were at home, and then the next year, you know, worlds were at home, and yeah. it was it was a really awesome way to. To, to end the career and, and playing in you know in front of amazing fans like the yeah. you know fans were packed all the time and yeah. um yeah but 2008 was was a was an awesome year it's just unfortunately we didn't get to get her done in in the isc and then uh, the next year we had some changes right mm-hmm. um with prawn rules and stuff that happened and and we had a really good team right we had nikki shales uh lucas was throwing for us um we had we had a really good team and i think I think we might have got third, yeah. fourth. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, you were third. Yeah. I was looking at it today. Yeah. Lost to the Patsies, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and you know, and God bless Dino. You know, he he went to Kitchener and, and made the best of it and got his ISC. And you know, nobody in that park besides his wife was happier than me. Um, yeah. Did you get to play so, against him you know, in the in the tournament? Yeah, no, he wouldn't have wanted that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He's still got a bump on his leg from a line shot I hit up the middle. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I had to throw that in there, boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, never got to play against them. Um, but uh, just, you know, I watched, like everybody, those mm. last outs. I was probably six, eight, nine, ten beers deep by that yep. point because mm-hmm. we were – you know, and I was done because I didn't go to nationals that year. Um, Aspen didn't go to nationals in 2009. And, and I just, you know, after Worlds and then playing the ISC, I decided that was it. I wasn't going to play, uh, go to nationals in, um, in 09 with anybody. So yeah. so I was done at that point. And, um, but watching Dino, you know, get those last outs was, was yeah, awesome. He, yeah, he came Nobody in, in the game deserved it more. Yeah, he came in for Marty yeah. there and just absolutely... Yeah shut the door like he was throwing bb's yeah. there yeah it was it was unfair yeah really because uh, you know the lights there aren't the greatest either and of course he's still throwing his the the pine tar ball so it was like <laughs> throwing a, a black ball in there too so um you know cheater yeah but he uh he definitely you know he deserved it that, that whole team did and i felt yeah. great for you know dj too daryl joy was on that team yeah a lot of great buddies on that team so, um, but you know, and it's great that Canadian team won too. That that that's the other thing. Yeah, exactly. For sure. It's not lo- not lost on me either. But yeah. yeah, for sure. Right on. Now I want to jump into the the coaching side for you. What uh, mm-hmm. what what was the main thing that got you into it? Um. Well, I, I coached my oldest boy uh, coming up. Like, and that's when I really kind of got into coaching. And and in Alberta, uh, when I was still playing in Saskatchewan, I still you know did did some lessons and did some clinics for Alberta softball, softball Sask, you know, stuff like that. Um, in Victoria, we did a whole bunch of clinics. That was kind of a fundraiser for us. So I, I really enjoyed working with the kids. It was a lot of fun, you know, cause they're looking at you like, wow, you know, like we, like I was looking at, you know, players in the day. Yeah. And, um, so I really enjoyed that part of it. And then, um, uh, my boy stopped playing uh, he discovered girls and, and other stuff. And my youngest boy, uh, I lost him to lacrosse. So he didn't play at all. So so they were kind of done. So then I was just kind of, you know, finishing up my career. And, um, and then uh, uh, I got somebody sent, I can't remember who it was. Somebody sent me an email of a job posting for Softball Sask. And they were looking for a high performance coach that would coach the Canada games team in 2013, the girls Canada games team. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I applied and I got it and, uh, nice. yeah, kind of surprised and, and had to get my level three. So, and I had my other, le- I had up my level two. And so I went through my level three and, and that was, um, 2011, 12, I guess, getting that team together. And then in 2000, the fall, I guess, of 2012, uh, Smitty gave me a call. Mark gave me a call and said, "Hey, um, we're we're redoing the the coaching pool for the the national team program. Um, would you be interested in 
you know, now that you're in the coach and be interested in something like that or applying for that. And I said, yeah, for sure. So, so I applied and, uh, got the gig and I thought, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll be in the coaching pool, maybe do some clinics or camps or whatever it was. And then next thing I know, Mel Basilio's giving me a call saying I'm her infield hitting coach for the <laughs> junior women's team. And I'm like, Sick. well, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so in 13, I coached the Canada games team. And then I was on, on Mel staff, uh, for worlds in, uh, Brampton. So that's, that's really where it got going. And I'll tell you what, fellas, um, I, I, I might have more fun doing that than I ever did playing. It's all right. Um, yeah, it's, it's, well, I don't hurt anymore. <laughs> yeah, true um, enough. But, but I really, I really enjoy it. Um, I had, uh, some really great experiences, obviously with the national team and, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, you know, we're that, we're that third, fourth, fifth kind of country, um, Japan, us or, you know, yeah. on the female side or the, or the big teams and, mm-hmm. Uh, I learned a ton, learned a ton from Smitty, uh, learned a ton from Mel Basilio, uh, Allie Bradley, uh, Haley O'Neill, some of the female coaches that I, you know, had the, the pleasure and honor to work with. And, um, yeah. And then, so I did two, two years as the assistant coach and Mel's hitting coach. And, um, you know, we, we did okay. Finished, uh, uh, we, we didn't do okay in Brampton. We should have done a lot better with the staff we had. Like we had grown wagon and we had some, we had a good team. Um, and then the, in 15, we got fourth lost to, uh, Megan King in Puerto Rico. Right. And, uh, and then, yeah. And then 2017 or 16, I guess after 15, Mel said, yeah, I'm, I'm done head coach. She was just going to focus on, on the senior team. And Smitty asked, you know, it was, you want to do take over the head coach and I was like yeah I'll, you know man I'm, I'm excited I'll give it a go and Sweet. uh yeah so got that opportunity and finished fourth in uh in Clearwater on the the most atrocious call I've ever seen oh, in my shit. life tell us and I, yeah I don't I don't blame umpires a bunch but it was just we were playing Puerto Rico we had loaded sacks with uh none out loaded sacks with none out in the sixth and we it was tie game and uh Kid hits an absolute rocket to the shortstop and uh, kid at third base. As soon as the ball left the bat, I'm screaming back because it, you know, got to yeah. make sure it goes through. Yeah. Kid makes a great play and uh, our kid, you know, jams on the brakes, dives back. And it was like a bang, bang play, like hand on the Shit. bang, ball arriving. Yeah. And the, the Japanese umpire uh, came running in and, and she rang her up and I was like, and, and there's there's a video where I'm I'm actually reaching down to help up the runner say good job on getting back and then this umpire comes running through and oh, shit. yeah it was it was oh, brutal it was yeah. brutal hey, I'm I, I not one f bomb was dropped but I was I yeah. was upset I went mm-hmm. to the umpire and um and I don't know why I remember this but I do he was a Kiwi so whatever and uh, and I went back to home plate and he. He said, yeah, Keith, I know, and we got to get this call right. And he's oh, blah, blah, blah. And he walked me all the way back to the third base coach's box and turned around and said, sorry, Keith, it's her call. What? Oh, my jumping. Yeah. And that, that stunned silence just was like, uh, what? Are you <laughs> kidding me? So anyway, so we're now we're two out. Yeah. And uh, next kid walks. So now we're loaded up again. The next kid hits a long sack fly to center field. So you know, had, had it not been and the sophomore got yeah. the same, a walk would have scored one run and a sack fly would have scored another. Yeah. And, you know, we, we probably win that game, but, um, yeah. So, it, you know, and then it all came together in, uh, in 19, um, in, uh, in California, the kids played well. We had an awesome, awesome run and, you know, we lost two games. We lost to Japan, lost to the U S and, and beat the Aussies, uh, in the in the bronze medal game to win yep. the first medal for Canada and, nice um yeah and you know like <laughs> like the intestinal fortitude of uh of Lauren Benson and Maddie Hickenbottom um you know I still watch that game once in a while and four out of the last five pitches are change-ups and I'm like that's nuts no. <laughs> yeah it's great it. and yeah. Brad was Trevor Ethier was our pitching coach and I think he called three pitches all week and he didn't call a game up uh, one pitch in the final Lauren Benson called every pitch and, and for girls that age, that's, that's a rarity. Yeah, for sure. That's huge. So, yeah. so yeah, so it all came together and, uh, 
Yeah, it was awesome. It was it was really cool. It was very satisfying, and I was really happy for the kids, yeah. and parents, and everybody involved with the program. And now I'm just uh, I'm not just, but I'm I'm a pool coach, and you know, hoping everything goes off at the Olympics, and um, mm-hmm. yeah. hoping that all those all those girls that have worked so hard uh, over the last you know. M- multiple years yeah it's not for sure the last two right yeah. yeah that they get an opportunity to go and, and show themselves because i think uh you know if they get an opportunity they're going to do really well it's good. Yeah, sure. so it's good. who's some, who's some yeah. of the uh the girls on the olympic team right now that uh, you would have had when you were the hitting oh coach? geez uh spears leong throne wagon uh who else is out there um emma and Sminger. okay yeah um, yeah, there was at one time, oh, um, uh, Kelsey Jenkins yep. at one time their, their starting infield all played on the junior team at one time. Sweet. Wow. But, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. It was, it was pretty cool. And, and you see that, you see that in the women's program yeah. more so than the guys program, yeah. right? Like, well now maybe the feeder is going to be there. Um, but I, I'm trying to think like on that 2009 team, I think Jody eight was the only guy that played on the junior team. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, because because it's every four years. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I know. I know. My I missed that age group. Dino missed that age group. Yeah. Um. So yeah, a little a uh, little bit different that way. But um. Yeah. So the the coaching gig is is awesome. Um. Now you know with with Dino and, and doing two twenty twos program has mm-hmm. has been amazing. Uh. Can't believe it's been seven years already, and uh, just you know having having the opportunity to work with these young women and and see them grow. Uh, you know, we we're, we're graduating a player, uh, Jordy Chartrand, who's she started when she was 11, and she's she's the only original uh, player left from our first year, and she signed a, a Division One full ride to Central Arkansas, and I mean, Damn. these kids throwing a 67 mile an hour drop ball, like it's That's you awesome. know, it's, yeah, it's crazy to see the development and. Um, actually here's a plug our next podcast I don't know when I'm on but our next podcast we're talking to all the girls that committed and we've only got one kid out of our graduating class that hasn't committed yet oh, wow. um, and it's a yeah, so it's it's really cool, fellas, working working with those young women and, yeah. and just seeing. Well, that must make you know, that must make you guys like really proud. Like the fact that you know, oh, they're signing full rides, like that just got to yeah. be just yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's cool, and you know, we're starting to we're starting to get some um, some pipelines, right? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, like like Jody. Well, we can't announce it yet. Well, there's another pitcher going to to Buffalo where Jody Hanniger is the pitching coach. <laughs> so that'll be the fourth pitcher out of our program to go there. That's right? awesome, right? So yeah, so it's having those connections. I think is huge for us. But um, it's just you know what it, we we coach them like we were coached. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You know, and one of the things that we're trying to do in our program is, um, you know, there's a lot of skill development, but we're teaching the game. Um, yeah, you know, the play on paper is to pick up the ball and throw it to first base. But then what do you do? Right. And, you know, do you have to throw it to first base? What if you fake throw and check the runner going from third? You know, like just yeah. little different things that we're, we're throwing wrinkles in that, um, and it, this is by no means any shot at, at coaches in Canada right now, but the fact is they don't have enough time. You know, our summers are so short. That's right. Seasons are so short. You know, we get these kids from essentially the end of August to, to April, and then we send them back, you know, back to their club teams. And um, so we get a lot of opportunity to work with these kids and phenomenal kids, phenomenal parents. Um, so, yeah, it's very satisfying to to see these kids grow in the game and, and, really, and really start to love it and have a passion like we have for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's really cool. That's it, ta- awesome. it takes you guys though, that you guys to give back because, because of the passion. Randy and I kind of talked about that yeah. earlier too. Um, having coaches that have played the sport and love the sport as much as we do, it's so beneficial for the kids. No question. Well, for sure. Yeah. We're, we're having, Dino and I are running around like 16 year old kids. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like yeah. we're, we're always hooting and hollering and, and we, we say that to our instructors, you know, you, let's be awesome today. Let's not suck today. You know, like let's, <laughs> let's bring the energy and, and if these kids are down a little bit, then let's bring them up. Because, right. yep. You know, and the thing too is you have no idea what these kids are going through, no. right. In their personal lives and stuff like that. And, um, and Hey, don't kid yourself. It is not lost on the fact that Dino and I know nothing about the female gender. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, it's a huge, 
huge learning curve for, for us. Sure. We say some dumb shit sometimes. <laughs> um, but uh, more Dino though, you're know, supposed to say. Yeah. Well, for sure. Well, yeah. Well, but the, but the best part is with Dino, he says it and then he forgets that he saw it. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, right? Um, but but just you know, working with these kids and 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 just you know whether they go to school or not, we just hope we're a positive influence. That's they, right. Yeah. continue to play the game or or get their kids when they have kids into the game and um yeah we're just our our hope is they they leave our program um amazing ball players but better people that i think that's kind of puts it in a nutshell yeah beautiful sure that's awesome that's awesome tosh anyway well uh on to the the last segment which uh I'm sure, sure you know it's the player association we're gonna, I, uh, I've been wondering what names you're going to pull out of the hat, fellas. So I've had to dig up some garbage on a bunch just in case. Okay, I, 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 mm-hmm. I think I may have got some that you you're familiar with. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. First one is uh, Dougie Chase. Dougie Chase. Wow. Doug, talk about bringing energy. Um, it, it Dougie Chase was um, he was one of the most energetic guys that I ever played with. Uh, him and Dave Bad of Inic were good buddies. And I always thought that, you know, playing against Victoria and watching Victoria, I thought, man, what a bunch of pricks. <laughs> like they are, they are so cocky. They are, you know, yeah. and, uh, but then you play with them mm-hmm. and, and you realize that it, they're not, they're, they're not putting on a show. That's just who they are. They are energetic. They are always loud. They are always talking, um, handle catchers with the best in the business. Uh, you know, you think about some of the pitches that Dougie caught over the years, not only in Victoria, but with the national team um, and with the farm at one time. Um, just a just a great leader. And I've never seen a guy that size hit the ball that far. Um, this is back in the days of aluminum bats. I remember him denting, you know, the green Louisvilles or the black and gold Louisvilles. Yeah. He he would dent a bat every BP and just and I don't mean dent it. I mean, crush it. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, hit the ball hard, rocket for an arm, uh, just just an all all around great player, but a great team guy. Nice, great team guy. Right on. Uh, next one is Corey Garou. You said it right, Randy. I said it right. Yes, <laughs> I I figured it'd be Ru. So Ru, I I've had the pleasure of most of my career, I've roomed with one of two guys, uh, Fathead and Corey. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Corey was, was my roomie in Victoria. Um, again, I, I just think I, I wish that, um, he had played a little longer, um, and had the opportunity. Cause I, I, I still think now, you know, he, he got his hall of fame and that's awesome. But I, I think sometimes he gets forgotten in the talk of some of the all time greats. Mm-hmm. Um, only be, only because maybe he was on the West coast. Um, you know, he wasn't in Ontario or the Midwest until, you know, he went to the farm. He had that big year at the farm when the IC, but, um, there's a guy that had more talent in his pinky than a lot of guys playing the game, standing in the circle that had in their whole body. Yeah. Like I, I've never seen somebody with as much raw talent and ability. Like his, his, his spins were so pure. Um, just effortless too, right? Like, yeah. And and gas. He just threw gas. <laughs> but again, a great team guy. Um, you know, would get fired up when he got fired up. Everybody got fired up because yeah. it, you know he didn't he didn't show that emotion very often. But um, yeah, no, just a, just an absolute gem of a guy. And uh, yeah, if he would have been, you know, maybe not on the west coast, but in Ontario or or say the Midwest even longer, he'd be in that discussion with the all time greats. Mm-hmm. Right on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next is a uh, friend of the friend of the podcast, Colin Abbott. <laughs> Abby. <laughs> uh, he, uh, well, I never saw Colin make a mistake in the outfield. Uh, he wow. he always he always yeah he didn't get to as many balls, and of course he had. <laughs> You know, I always said when he was playing for the farm, we should have put him in center field because we could have bookend him with Wolfie and Rosie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. With, Rosie, with Rosie playing center field, he had to go a long way. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But if, if you just split the field in half and yep. if Abby just stayed out of the way, <laughs> yeah. it would be fine. Right? Yeah. Um, uh, one of the worst dancers on the planet. For sure. <laughs> um, but probably one of the best teammates and, and obviously when we talk all all time greatest hitters. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, I, 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 we talk about, I would never teach a kid to hit that way. You can't, you can't teach a kid <laughs> no. to hit that way. And if, and if, and if, and if any of our kids were taught to hit that way, they wouldn't be going to school. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but Abby's, Abby's swing is unique and, um, his, his approach at the plate, um, is, is second to none, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, definitely if, if not, if not the greatest hitter to come out of this country, he's in the top two or three for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. And, and I know it's tough to judge guys from different eras, but I think Abby's Abby, the way Abby approached the game, the way he played the game, the way he, um, was a teammate, uh, it would have gone across all eras. It yeah. wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Yeah. And, and he's not fast. He can tell you he's fast. He's fast. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. These, uh, last two you're probably familiar with, uh, Pat McIntosh. Patty Mac. Uh, love him like a brother. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And I, I don't know if you guys heard, he had a twister here, uh, this, this fall. And, um, it, it was a little bit scary there for a while. He's, he's all recovered now and his heart's probably in better shape than most. Oh, shit. Um, but I, I think, uh, I think my brother, um, might, might go down in some circles is one of the most underrated players in the game. Yeah. And, and I say that, and I, I don't say that in that he didn't get his dues and he, he was all world a couple of times and, and, uh, got his shot with the national. I'm not saying he's, he's by any means. Um, uh, but he just, he played so many positions. Well, mm-hmm. um, like I think he's the ultimate, ultimate utility guy. Um, again, one of these guys with, a, a, a an effortless way he plays, uh, he thinks the game very well. Um, I always bug him. I say, you got the mental toughness of a high school cheerleader sometimes. But, <laughs> um, uh, I got to tell you a quick story. He'll hate me for doing do it. Do it. it. So, okay. So I'm standing on deck and I'm hitting behind him. I can't remember. If, we might've been playing for Aspen and we were playing at, at Gordie Howe and uh, I'm standing on deck. So I got out there earlier than him and the inning before or the at bat before he struck out on a rise ball around his ears up and in like there's no way he should have been swinging at that right anyways he strikes out so he's mad and uh on the way by on the way by he uh i say to him as i'm warming up and getting ready to go i said uh hey watch that high one all i said hey watch that high one. <laughs> so he strikes out and and i'm i you know, and I, I'm like, okay, tough, tough at bat. Okay. So I, I take the weight off my, and I'm, I'm turning around to the fence, taking the weight off my bat and I turn around and he's now he's almost in my face. And as he's walking by, he says, don't ever talk to me again on the way to the plate. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I stopped and I looked at him and that's when I came up with, dude, seriously, I, <laughs> I you struck out cause I said that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> But he was my training partner. I mean, I, I don't think I would have had the success uh, I had in this game without him. You nice. know, we played yeah. we we played catch all the time. We we made up games in the backyard. Um, yeah, just yeah, phenomenal guy. I can't imagine not having him as a brother. That's special. And, sure. um, and like I said, he's uh, like I said, he's he's an awesome player. So he could go play senior A right now, boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah. He definitely and he wouldn't skip a beat. I'm sure there's teams that are still calling him. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, uh, one of those guys that I look on my career and without him, I'm not me. So nice. Friggin right. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And last, but Love not like least, brother. yeah, last but not least, uh, Dean Holine. <laughs> yeah. Good guy. All right. Great podcast. Oh, yeah. Guys. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having Wait, us. that's backwards. Say good, say good night, Donnie. Uh, um, no, I, uh, uh, well, I mean, what do you say? Yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. I, I mean, there's, there's, we, we, we were just on the phone talking before, uh, I got on this cast with you guys getting, doing the algebra problem that is our practice plan every weekend now with COVID. Oh yeah. Stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, he's my brother. There's no question. Yeah. He's yeah. my brother. Um, I don't, I don't know if there's two guys that uh, could be tighter. I imagine there's people that claim they are, but, um, I don't know. I, I just think that all the stuff that we've gone through together, successes and, you know, some of the shitty stuff, uh, whether it's personal life, whether it's, you know, we were, we were each other's best man. We were each other's shoulder during divorces. We were, you know, all those things. Right. And, uh, and now it's just, you know, I can't imagine 
doing anything that I'm doing now without him. Right. Like yeah. it's, and, and we talk about it and you guys probably hear it on our podcast, mm-hmm. the, the back and forth. And, and one of the things we say is, um, the, the show, as we call it, that we have at practice is just on the podcast now. We're the same way at practice. We're right. always hacking on each other. <laughs> if he does something like he sends kids one way, I'm going, what are you doing? You know, like, why are you? And we argue in front of the kids all the time. But um, outside of the friendship, I there's no question that um, I had the best seat in the house to one of the best careers ever mm-hmm. in the circle. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I was behind that fat ass a lot. And, <laughs> uh, my, my hands have a few rings on them because of the stuff that he did. Um, some of the stuff that he did is still unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, nobody, nobody has a bigger heart. Uh, nobody loves the game more. And, um, yeah, he's, I, I think he's the guy, he's the man. Love no it. Question. That's awesome. Love it. All right, Tosh, man, I'm so happy we got you to come on the podcast. This is yeah, been, this has been this awesome. I, I yeah, it. fantastic. Well, it was a lot of fun talking to cut. Like I said, when I you get you sent me the text, I said it'll be nice to work with a couple guys that know what they're doing. <laughs> um, because between Dino and Donnie, I mean, it's just it's a crapshoot whether we survive a podcast. Like, <laughs> you know, on one shot at Donnie, like we go into the studio. Do you not test the equipment before we get there? <laughs> you know. Like you wait till one podcast. We we called somebody and he called the wrong number. You know, oh. Talking to this dude, Dean from Winnipeg. We talked to him for about three minutes. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of shit that I deal with all the time, fellas. So I love it. it was awesome, awesome working with guys like yourselves. But yeah, keep it up, boys. Uh, great podcast. I really enjoyed. It. I listened to all of them. Excellent. Um, and uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, you guys as well, Same man. I'm. You know what? Yeah. I'm loving the fact that you know. We, we were able to go back and forth. Like, you know, people, yeah, people talk sure. about outside the shoot and they talk about twos talk now. And, and, you know, the fact we, we both started up in, in July around the, the same yeah. time. And, and the fact, you know, everybody, everybody seems to be loving it. And I love the fact that we're able to both, both be able to benefit from this. Yeah. It's awesome. It is really cool. Really cool. So yeah. no better sport. Thanks for having me boys. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Tosh. Take care. All right. All right, man. Take See care. You, brother. Awesome. So awesome. Oh, man. I forgot we were doing this. Yeah. <laughs> that was wicked. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. He yeah. doesn't remember me, but he's great. Yeah. I mean, all Not those great don't. stories. Like, yeah. Very... I, I like the I like the friendship stuff too, man. That's yeah. so cool. And I like the fact that, and you, my, and you and I have talked about it. Yeah. You think a team is a bunch of dickheads and yeah. they're not a bunch of dickheads. Like, we're learning a lot of that now. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I actually, although Keith does think Dino's a dickhead, but anyway, you know what's funny? Yeah. I actually hung up before I wanted to. Yeah, I saw you said, "Okay, thanks." Michael. <laughs> He's like, "What the fuck?" Sorry, Tosh. I actually didn't mean to hang up there. And so <laughs> you're gonna listen. To this. What, a, what a dick! Yeah. <laughs> Do you need to pee? Because that was a peaches episode. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it's only one thirteen. I'm That's kidding, awesome. man. I'm kidding. Anyway, it's uh, Friday night here. Yeah. Might as well. Uh, yeah, Super Bowl weekend, by Super the way. Bowl weekend, even though it's already over and when this is. Doesn't matter. Anyway. Any predictions just so when this podcast does come out, you can say? Uh, oh, wait, it's here. hard to just bet against Brady, even all. though I hate him. Yeah. But the fact that he wins all the time, <laughs> it's just. Yeah. But I mean, Casey Mahomes is unreal. Casey's yeah. got a good team, and if they lose, it's their own fault. Yeah. That's my opinion. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't really pick anybody? Nope, I didn't pick anybody. <laughs> That's a pussy move. Yeah. All right. Anyway, everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in again. Again, we're on all social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Share Facebook. and like it. YouTube. YouTube. Share, like. Like. And uh, please be very aware of COVID around you and wash your hands, social distance, stay safe. And hope to see you on the ball field this summer. Yes, sir. All right, right. Dick. Have a good weekend. You too. Lots of five. I love you so. I love you so. I love you so. I know I never took it serious Then what we had got fucked up We grew apart but in my heart I still loved ya Back at the start I thought it last so long Went by so fast now it feels like the passion is gone Everything I loved about you just got pissed away And it really gets to be because I miss some days You was modest, on it's pretty much you're gone It's the farthest thing from 50 or heartless And never thought less 
rest of the jobless poor head Even though I couldn't get your cards of chocolates You put up with my nonsense day after day You were one of them types you don't let get away Shit, we used to get looped together I remember one time you were so sick we almost puked together Your mood was better then, but who would've knew what we had We would soon lose forever, damn, I still love you We met, you were like my sunshine We were too young for love, but I knew you'd be mine Had to let you go and get on with my life Now I got you back, ain't gon' leave it this time I know I said I wouldn't do it, but I did it And now it got me wishing that my position was switching Never no hugs, no tongue, never kissing But keep fucking with us since the first day I hit it The minute that you talked, I would listen You made the way that I walk a little different I like your vibe, like the way that you feel Your head style from the start, now you're paying my bills I gotta love it Yeah, I'm a little obsessed And I'll confess, without you, I feel a little depressed The wife's had it, sick of me giving you my attention Really, I see a point, but it was never my intention I'm always talking and praying you up like yo check this is she amazing or what and the fatter that you get the better i can't complain the mistress in my life music before the fame i love it